Welcome to Industry Overview of the Graphic Communication Industry. Today's learning objectives, I wish you like hand statements, I want you to be able to define the graphic communication industry and describe the size and economic value of the industry. I would like you to identify the types of businesses and organizations that comprise the industry. I want you to review the types of products and services provided by the industry. I want you also to evaluate the use of value of different types of printing to a customer. I want you to be able to describe the markets that use the printing and compare the role, cost, and effectiveness of printing compared to other communication mediums. I also want you to assess different examples of types of communication mediums. I want you to identify local and national graphic communication associations. And I want you to describe the purpose of local and national graphic communication industries and associations. So first we're going to start off with what is graphic communications? The term related graphics relates to a visual or things that we can see. The term communication refers to the exchange of information in any form. Therefore, adding the two together, graphic and communications, is the exchange of information in a visual form, such as words, drawings, photographs, or combination of these. The economic impact. Print powers the economy. Almost all printing and imaging that is consumed in the United States is produced domestically. Print is so widespread that in everyday use that is ubiquitous as a communication medium and packaged material, and also spatially spread across the landscape of the country. Anywhere you look, you see something printed, something that is graphic communications. Currently, there's 165 billion in shipments generated annually by print and packaging. Did you know that there's more printing establishments in the US than there are McDonald's in the world? Over 800,000 American workers are employed by print. And every state has at least 100 print facilities or 1,000 print industry employees. Now, the graphic communication industry can be divided into different segments or classifications. The three main ones are commercial printers, quick printers, and implant printers. Commercial printers is a segment of the industry that encompasses all sizes and types of the printing operation. These range from small local shops with one or two employees to large companies with several plant locations and hundreds of thousands of employees. Products produced are varied as the company size. Quick printers is a segment of the industry that specializes in rapid turnaround of short run printing and copying services. These are both independently owned and franchised quick printing operations and are designed to serve the needs of a business customer. And the third segment is implant printers. This segment of the industry covers printing facilities operated by companies whose business is not the production of printed material. For example, a college or university print shop. Their main goal at a college or university is education, but they have a print shop to help make print out the products needed by the university. So there's lots of different products and services offered. You've probably seen these anywhere you go, so we're going to go through a few of them. First is periodical and newspaper print. <clears throat> periodical plants primarily produce magazines. They use what's called a web-fed offset lithography or graveyard printing. Um, RR Downley here in town, which also turned up at LSC, uses it. And when they, we've got quad graphics down in <clears throat> Effingham, and then also King Reprinting, and also uh, Wave Graphics or Premier Printing up in Champaign. There's also newspaper printings, which is web-fed offset lithography, and they have a network of regional printing sites. There are tons of books and forms that are printed. Books can be anything from fiction and non-fiction or textbooks, and these are usually done on web-fed offset lithography or flexography presses. 
And then form printing produces special paper forms for most businesses, such as sales receipts, message pads, labels, business cards, letterheads, stationery. Um, most people are going to digital equipment for these for printing instead of offset printing. Then you have financial printing. Uh, these are controlled by the federal government, and they print checks, bonds, currency, lottery tickets, and certificates. The biggest industry is packaging. Package printing varies on varied type of material from plastic, paper, cardboard, corrugated board, and foil. It is the largest part of the industry, or products of the industry produced. Like just walk into any store and you can see packaging, especially in like a grocery store or a retail store. And last is specialty printing. They, this is the different types of printing they have is 3D printing, dye sublimation printing, screen printing, or vinyl printing. There are several different markets, um, five to be exact, that use different products. So the first one is direct mail. Most customers uh, are looking to get their advertisements out, and so they can use postcards, mailers, or coupons that will be delivered to a person's house through their mail. Other customers use books, uh, fiction, nonfiction, or textbooks. There's also magazines and periodicals for different customers, depending on their needs. Stationery and forms, business cards, envelopes, letterhead, any type of form a business would need. And packaging, cardboard, corrugated board, foil, paper, or plastic. Now, many times, customers prefer print because of the popularity and effectiveness is timeless, and it continues to thrive even in an era increased, of increased electronic media and services. In today's world of e-commerce and social media, the real key to print value is being a reliable part of the overall communication mix. Did you know Amazon has put together a catalog for Christmas time to send out to people? I know most of their stuff's online, but still people like to look through a catalog. So 41% of Americans shop using both catalog and internet. 30% more dollars are spent by multimedia shoppers. That means they have something print and electronic than a single media shopper, just electronic. 92% of consumers say they get ideas for household shopping trips based on printed flyers, stuff they get in the mail, direct mailers, or in magazines. Over 66% of direct mail is opened, and 82% of those pieces are read for one minute or more. When you, I know when I go to the mailbox, when I look into it, I'm looking over all the stuff that comes in. Those are considered direct mailers. In 2015, over 90% of nonprofit gifts were donated using traditional means, such as postal mail, versus approximately 7% of online donations. And 67% of consumers in a recent survey said they found paper more pleasant to handle and touch than other media. So let's talk about some other mediums. Success in today's graphic communication industry requires looking beyond ink on paper. The way consumers get their information and communication materials have evolved to encompass more complex and integrated methods of delivery. Regardless of the delivery, the designer needs to present a consistent visual experience to the viewer throughout all forms of media. So first we're going to talk about web design and development. It needs to focus on looks and be interactive. All the information needs to be easily accessed. You also have mobile media, which is an essential part of the day-to-day -day life. Smartphones and tablets, they have to have a responsive design. And there has to be a smooth transition between screen sizes. You want to make sure what you see on a desktop computer looks good on a tablet or a smartphone. It has to be consistent. Digital publishing has become a standard method of delivery. Similar preliminary steps are print, as print publishing. It's more cost effective and you can update it and add revisions. It also gives instant delivery options. 
Another type of printing is monography, which is a water-based ink with nanopigment particles. Gaming encompasses programming, game design, illustration, and animators. Gaming software industry drives hardware and software industries, and the design innovates creativity. Then you have animation and 3D printing. Animation creates an illusion of motion using still images. It can be used in digital publishing, gaming, mobile media, and online resources. Where 3D printing lays down layers of material to create objects. I uh, usually use 3D modeling software, and it allows you to see in manufacturing um, what is new uh, for product development. It gives you something tangible or hands-on. Now we're going to compare the advertisement or return on investment, ROI. First one we're going to work on is social media, pay-per-click. So social media or pay-per-click, the cost of it is about $0.05 cents to $0.03 cents per qualified visitor. A qualified visitor is somebody that has a good, uh, is a good email, it's free to stream for qualified traffic. The cons, it's easy for amateurs to mismanage campaign and waste money. Next, we're going to go to internet email marketing. Again, the cost is about approximately $0.05 cents to $0.03 cents per qualified visitor. Yes, you can be tracked. Um, it's good to use your own email database. That way you have previous customers that you can contact. The only thing is, inboxes are cluttered. If you're like me, I get a lot of emails. I call them spam. And sometimes I just don't have time to go through all of them. Direct mailers are a little bit more expensive. They are $51.40 per order, and yes, they can be tracked. Uh, the pros are that it's targeted. You can use your mailing list. The cons is publishing and postage counts drive up with additional investment. But it is guaranteed that you can have it in your hand. Somebody will physically have it in their hand when they get it out of the mailbox. And last but not least is television. This is the most expensive advertisement, about $342,000 per 30-second ad. The thing problem is, you don't know who's watching it, so you cannot track. The pros is anyone can watch it. You get a lot of exposure, but the cons are it's expensive and it will waste on impressions on probably qualified customers. And if you're like me, um, I don't watch TV. But when I do watch TV, it's usually something that's recorded, and I can zip through the commercials. <laughs> so I don't always see what people are spending their money on a making commercial. And our last part, we're going to talk about the Graphic Communication Associations. These are organizations that support the industry through education, events, and support. They offer information resources, like all the information on that is by, on this industry overview. A lot of the facts I got from Graph Communication Associations. They have job opportunities, they have education, and for students interested in the career, they have scholarships, and then they support you if you need it. And there's a link, so in case you would like to go to the website.